Hello, boys and girls. C.S. Murphy here. Uh, I've got Sketchbook Pro 6 in front of me, just upgraded. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, some really cool uh, tool features, uh, some new brushes, a new way of scrolling and categorizing your uh, new stuff. Uh, let's jump right in uh, to the tool section here. We've got uh, these two new guys right here. We have the French Curves tool, which is right here, and we have the Steady Stroke tool. Now these are two tools I probably won't use, but uh, I'll just show them off here just for the sake of showing them to you. Uh, just to give you an example, uh, we've got four little icons surrounding the shape here. This will actually scale it like I just did. Uh, this guy right here will rotate it. Uh, this will X out of it. And this will actually move it around. So there's five, sorry, there's one in the middle as well. And this will actually change the shape as well. Uh, these are some pretty bizarre shapes. Uh, but the, it's, it's more or less like a ruler, so I come in here and pretty much draw around here, and it'll basically draw along the contour nowhere else. If I drew out here, you wouldn't be able to see it, okay? It'll only show up over here. Um, so yeah, you can move it around and get some pretty cool, you know, draft concepts, change the shape of it, go in here and kind of, you know, draw some stuff, you know, X out of it, you know, do some freehand stuff. Stuff like that. You get the idea. I wouldn't use it, um, but just to show you the tool. Um, steady Stroke Tool. And basically, if you're kind of taking your time and you want to build this like really cool line, if you if you go slow, you're you're putting a bunch of little wobbles and curves and stuff, as you can see right there. And it's not pleasant when you're trying to be super super accurate and you want some really clean line quality. So this thing, it's kind of cool. Uh, you go in here and you basically draw the same shape out, but now you have this kind of like weird line that basically recalibrates what you're drawing and smoothens it out. Um, and it's a little slow because I'm already done drawing and it's still doing its thing. Uh, that could be adjusted actually by using the less or more value here. Uh, the less you use, the less of a trail you have behind, so it's still smoothing things out, but it's a little bit more forgiving. Um, and it's a little less accurate as well. The more you do that, you know, you know the, the more you put this value on, it's going to definitely kind of like tighten this shape up a little bit more. Make it a little bit more straight, as you can see right there. Anyways, it's another tool. It's kind of cool, but I wouldn't use it. Just draw. Um, next thing on the menu is the color puck. Now this thing is really cool. Uh, everyone's used to this size one over here. This one will actually change the color. So you come in here and you adjust it to your fitting. Maybe actually let's go a little greenish blue here. And we'll just color with this color. Uh, now the cool thing that's hidden about this uh, color puck here is that if you drag upwards, inside of this circle here, you're actually going to change the hue. So up and down are, is going to change the hue of the color, and you can see that divider mark there showing you the, the previous color and then the color you're actually changing into. That's really, really cool. Um, or you can drag downward and go a little darker here. And a little bit darker. And just keep going. But a word of caution, though, is that if you go too, too low, I mean, from here you can still go back up into the actual uh, original color, which is somewhere over, actually it's lighter than that, somewhere over here. Uh, but the thing is, if you go too, too low, if you completely darken out the hue of your color into black, and you try to scroll back up, you're not going to have that color anymore, because you totally uh, took the hue value out of your color. So just be mindful. Uh, let's select this middle color, I believe it was this one, here again, just to show you that again. You know, you can go downward and change the hue and darken it and brighten the, the luminance values of them. But don't go too, too dark and don't go, I think, too, too bright, too. I think once you wash it out white, uh, you lose the color as well. There's that, and then all the way white, and then we try to bring that down, and there we go again. So it goes straight to grayscale if you wash it out in either direction, so be mindful of that. And dragging left to right, like I said, is going to change the saturation, which is going to give you a different color value altogether. So we're going to go a little bit left here, and it's just going to start 
you know, losing its color value. It's also going to wash out, but it's going to get a little bit more gray because we're actually taking the the color more and more out as we scroll. We'll get into this purple here. So same thing, just be uh, mindful of what's going on here. And in the opposite direction, we're going to really, really change the saturation. I think it's as high as it's going to go right there. So yeah, cool feature of this uh, new color puck that's been added. Uh, the next thing I would like to talk about are the uh, new brushes. These are really cool. Um, the synthetic brushes. Firstly, let me go into this little icon right here. If you click on this, you get a whole new menu here. This is really cool. It's a way to keep all of your standard brushes and all the custom brushes that you create. Um, but these synthetic ones are the ones I'm going to go into right now. If you click on this guy, and let's pick a, a new color here. I'm going to some orange here and just start coloring. This is really cool. Um, basically, the initial stroke is going to give you your color, okay? But if you start washing, or not washing, but, but coloring into other colors, it's going to wash out on you. So in order for you to keep the, the orange value, you just have to keep applying paint, which is just, you know, a separate stroke. But it's really cool. I'm really liking uh, this new feature. You can get some really nice uh, painterly-like uh, uh, quality in your in your artwork now. Uh, the next one would be these blending brushes, uh, which you'll find uh, down here as well. Uh, smudge brushes, uh, and they're outlined in this little menu as well. But if you grab one of these guys, you can actually now uh, properly. Let's just lower this here a bit. Uh, blend between colors, which is cool. So I'll just go back into these uh, different hues of these greens here and just, you know, blend all these guys in. It's really cool. You get some really, like, messy, organic type quality in here with these new brushes. I'm really uh, happy with these. Just blend them all in, blend the oranges into the greens, whatever you want to do. It's your world. So yeah, uh, that's uh, another brush that I'm extremely um, happy with. Uh, moving along here, and just to go back into the menu here, uh, this is basically where you're going to keep all of your custom brushes and create them and all your brush sets. So if I create, uh, or if I select rather, uh, my custom set here, this little radial pop-out menu here, will allow you to create a new brush set or a new brush or to copy brushes, export them, rename them, whatever you'd like. Um, it's a very nice way to organize everything. I'm, I'm really, really happy with the way they uh, set this up. Another cool uh, feature here uh, in the brushes, especially when you're customizing them, go over here for a second. Um, in the brush properties, you have a brush color now which is really neat. You've got uh, hue randomize, saturation randomize, and brightness randomize. Um, I set all, all of these to 25 and created this really cool brush out of it. Basically what it's going to do is it's going to randomize the color per stroke. Uh, and what I mean by that is, let's see here, this is the custom brush I made with that. We'll go in here and we'll select a uh, Let's go with blue, and we'll bring this up a little bit. Basically, when you color a line, it'll keep that color until you let go. But as soon as you create another line and a new brush stroke, it's going to randomize the color. Now, for me to create a custom color palette based off of these colors would probably take me in a little bit, because I'd have to go in here, change the color uniquely, create a line, and just repeat it for each stroke. But in this case, you're getting some really cool uh, variations depending on your, your settings in the uh, color, hue, and brightness randomizers there. Um, but I mean, this is, this is kind of cool. I'm really, really digging this. I mean, you can just see where the randomization takes you. Yeah, I'm just kind of farting around here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. 
but you're okay. You're alright. Yeah. And I have not changed the color once. I just kind of let the program shift those color values based off of uh, my specifications there. Cool stuff. The next thing, um, it's not a biggie, but uh, we've got this uh, layers palette here. Um, the layers palette doesn't have anything really new other than a rearrangement of sorts. Uh, the text, the, uh, the insert image, the clear, and the add layer are now removed from a radial menu that was once here, along with the preserve transparency lock. Uh, basically, it's just making everything a little bit more uh, accessible just by a button click as opposed to having to go into, you know, uh, a radial menu, like the older version of Sketchbook. I'll show you just a quick second here, um, like right here. So this is the previous version, uh, and you'd have to go to this selector to go into rasterize, add text, all the different blend modes per layer, um, and now those are all conveniently uh, located right out here. So, like I said, it's new, but it's just a rearrangement of sorts. Nothing has been added to this uh, menu, per se. And finally, uh, one cool little feature that they have here. Um, in the previous version of Sketchbook Pro, you know, you had these kind of, like, menus that drop down where you can actually set up your brushes and, and pencils and stuff. And I've got a couple here at the bottom here, aside from the preset ones that Sketchbook provides. Um, this is kind of cool, but, you know, the, the width is a little too wide, you know, especially when you're filling up the canvas. You know, you want uh, as much real estate space on the screen as possible to draw with and not uh, a bunch of menus out in the open. So this is kind of cool. I, I dug this. Um, you can basically trim your brush palette uh, as small as you'd like, and you can actually scroll now by clicking and dragging, which is very cool. Um, I like that feature. Like I said, it's out of the way. It allows me to kind of condense my windows here, my color puck, the, the uh, brush size. Um, everything's pretty much out of the way. And uh, I, I normally don't even have this up for that matter. This is just for a demonstration purpose to show the two new tools up here. So when I'm drawing, it's pretty much uh, this right here. This is what you see. You know. All right, so that just about wraps up my Sketchbook Pro 6 review. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found some really cool new features that make you want to upgrade. Uh, this program is incredible. It mimics a pencil unbelievably. I use it for all of my uh, character roughs and all that stuff. It's basically the first program I open up uh, when I create. So um, this is uh, C.S. Murphy signing off. Happy drawing, and I will see you on the web.